Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Norman for Option Rally Academy. We're going to get started with this evening's class. So welcome to Support and Resistance. Now, let me tell you a little about the class tonight and also about how the Option Rally's new academy operates. We run like a university. We have a curriculum that consists of 12 classes that we offer every Thursday evening. And these are cycled through every semester. So right now you can see on our website the December, January, and February classes. In, Feb in March, we will start rerunning the classes we offered in um, December. But each semester over a year's period, the classes become a little bit more advanced. So for instance, tonight's class is just a general basic guide to support and resistance. The next semester will be in Support Resistance Class 2, and that will be more advanced because at that point you should have had some basic understanding of what Support and Resistance are. And then we will have a third class and a fourth class throughout the year. So each class will advance you farther down. Same thing when we do trading the economics calendar, channel trading, uh, elevator trading. Each class circles around, so a year from now you can start all over at the beginning but each class is independent, so no matter where you stand in this, the time, you can attend the class and you'll be able to follow them along. But you have to remember a lot of our traders coming to Option Rally are brand new traders, so we have to start everybody out on the basics and we will slowly move forward. Plus we record these webinars and about a week and a half after we're finished recording or presenting the webinar, once our editing department's had a chance to edit it out, take all my mistakes out, start it at a nice point, put a title page in, do all that stuff, they're available on our YouTube station. So you'll be able to go to our YouTube channel and watch these. So if you're picking up Support and Resistance 2, you can go back and watch Support and Resistance 1. And now the classes are always different even if you're seeing the same class again because we always refer to the current market situation and we're always talking about how assets are trading at this time. Now, the other thing is you can ask any questions you like. I will only try, if your question is a general question about tonight's class, I will try to address it and answer it right in class. If it's a question that, about something else related to tonight's class, but it's more specific, I will try to type you back an answer. But at Option Rally, we are always concerned with answering all of your questions. So regardless of if you're asking a question about an individual matter, um, a particular thing that is of interest to you or that you want to know. I may not be able to get you an answer in class tonight because we're looking at 50 or 60 people attending, but somebody tomorrow from customer support will send you a detailed answer with all the information you need or your account manager will get back in touch with you with the proper answer because we will always make sure you get answers to all of your questions. But in tonight's class, don't hesitate to ask a question. Just type it into your screen because if you don't understand something or you're a little bit confused about something, most likely so are the other people in the class. So somebody needs to ask that question. So feel comfortable asking as we go through. Now again, tonight's class is support and resistance. So in order to use support and resistance, you have to be able to read a chart. And charting is allows you to properly apply technical analysis. Now, not every trader believes in using technical analysis. For instance, I believe in a two at point. I'm a fundamental trader. Okay. I trade based on the news and things that I hear and read. Okay. But I always, always check some basic technicals because it's my backup system. It's what hits me in the head and says, hey, dummy, you missed something. Okay. So, Everybody should always be able to read a chart. Think of a chart more as a road map. Okay? You need to be able to see quickly where a currency or an, a commodity or a stock is trading. You need to be able to look at a chart and not only see what the price is, but see the pattern it's exhibiting. And almost you can almost tell a story. I can look at the euro, US dollar throughout the day, and I can tell you when something either popped in the news or when an economic report, or I knew an economic report was due at 3 o'clock today, and I can see how the currents reacted, so I can tell you if that economic report was good or bad. Okay. So you need to get used to using charts, no matter how basic you want to start trading. 
Now, technical analysis relies on the price that is on the chart you are using. Most charting systems will allow you to add technical analysis tools as overlays to your chart, and that's where we get to support and resistance. Okay. There are two types of studies. There are those that use price in a calculation, and the numeric value gives you some indication on future price movement. So if you see right here, this is the Euro US dollar chart. Let me get a marker out here for you. And this is the Euro US dollar chart earlier this afternoon. This is today's chart. We can see the Euro was trading at 136.18. Okay. And we can see where the Euro has moved over the last six days, the last week. Okay. We can see the Euro has steadily dropped down, and the Euro actually hasn't eased as the dollar has gotten a lot stronger and has traded basically sideways today. But on this chart, I've added in RSI. Okay, and MACD. Now these are two technical indicators that are based on numeric calculations that are not placed on a chart. RSI is relative strength index and MACD is moving average convergence and divergence. And they use the current price off of the chart and their calculations are then placed on separate charts that you can read and they have numeric values. Okay. This is not what we're looking at tonight. We're looking at support and resistance, which is the other type of technical indicator. And there are those studies that are placed on a chart and help you define proof price movement on the current chart. And that's where we get to support and resistance. On this chart, I have, let me get my marker back up here for us. I have a moving average line put on here. So a moving average is actually a technical indicator that's placed on a chart. <coughs> Moving average is one of the basic tenets of technical analysis. And basically what moving averages do is they smooth out the noise in price movement. They don't change the price movement, but by taking averages, whether you're doing a, a one day, a 10 day, a 20 day, a 50 day, <coughs> excuse me, moving average, it helps you smooth out the price and get a better visual view of how the price is moving or how the traffic is moving on the, 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 the chart. Okay. Now we come to support and resistance. Now what is support and resistance? Support and resistance are important technical levels for a price. Support describes a price level of an asset uh, that it that an asset tried to cross below but ultimately stayed above. Resistance describes a price level that an asset tried to cross above but could not. Okay, that's, that's a little bit kind of complicated. It's a little bit kind of wordy. The bare minimum requirement to draw a support line or a resistance line is that the asset must spend a significant amount of time or volume at a particular price level. Specific types of support and resistance lines can be drawn based on additional chart patterns. Okay, that's again a lot of words, so let's make it easier. Imagine price is in an elevator, and the asset, whether it's the euro or gold, is standing in the door of the elevator. And so what you have is you have resistance above your head. That's if the price is moving up. And what you have to do is you have to push up through that upper ceiling to make it to the next floor. So that's the resistance. The floor below your feet is your support level. Okay. So imagine now you're inside this elevator and you're jumping up and down, up and down, up and down, trying to break through that floor. Well, if you just fell right through that floor, you didn't have a significant um, price movement at that point. You didn't have anything gathering. You didn't have any volume. You went right through it. So that wouldn't become a support level. The support level would be basically the price you couldn't fall. So if you jumped and jumped and jumped, went right through that floor down to the next floor, and there you had to jump up and down really hard and you couldn't get it and you stayed there for a while, that would be your support level. If you were going, bouncing up and your head was hitting the ceiling and you bounced right through there, you're on a trampoline, you went right through there, it went through easily, Okay, then it wasn't actually a point of support or resistance. It was just a price. So 
imagine, close your eyes, and imagine you're in the elevator, and you're priced and you're moving up. Okay, well, there's people getting on and off the elevator all day long, and you're trying to get up to that 15th floor, but the thing is, you can't push the button to take you to 15. So what happens, people get on the floor, and one person gets up and takes up three, then five people get on and push it down to two, and then three people get done nine. Well, after a while, you're going to realize which floors you saw many times throughout the day while you were waiting to get up to that 15th floor. Now, if you happen to get lucky and somebody got on that elevator and pushed 15 and went straight up, guess what? You had no support and resistance between. You went straight up the 15. So this is an easy way to look at support and resistance. Imagine you're in an elevator. Now, we have to remember it reverses itself if price is coming down. Okay. So if you are going down and you're up on the 15th floor and you're trying to come down to the first floor, what is below your feet? It's a resistance because you are trying as hard as you can to push that elevator down. And you are trying very, very hard. So it is resisting you. Okay. So when price is moving up, it is just like imagine, close your eyes and riding in that elevator. The floor is supporting you and the roof is, because, is near your head. And when you move up to the next floor, guess what? What the ceiling was below your, above your head now becomes a floor below your feet. And this is what happens with support and resistance lines. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Do you understand what we're talking about or understand the description I'm trying to give you here? So imagine a ball hits the floor and bounces. It drops after it hits the ceiling. Support and resistance is like the floor and a ceiling with prices sandwiched between them. When a stock's price has fallen to a level where demand at that price increases and the buyers begin to buy, this creates a floor or a support level. When a stock's price rises to a level where demand decreases and owners begin to sell to lock in their profits, this creates a ceiling or resistance level. So let's try to explain this in an easier scenario. Imagine you are a retailer. You bring in a new product into your store. Okay. You kind of know what your costs are. You know the price that you would like to make, the profit you'd like to make. And you place, first of all, you know that if you put it up on the store shelf at $2, it's not going to interest people. But $1.99 is a key price because people tend to think of it as less than $2. They don't think it's thing the $2 level. They think of it as $1 level. So you meet less resistance. You also know that if you take that item and drop it down on sale to $1.50, it's going to run out your door. People are going to stock up on it, buy tons of it, and if you put it at $2.05, it's going to sit on your shelf and rot. So you first come up with a level of the price that it will sit normally, and then you can put it on sale a little bit lower. You can jack it back up and then put it on sale down lower. And what you're doing is you're creating this range of prices. But first, you have to figure out what these prices are because you're not just making them up. So you're going to test the level of support and resistance. You're going to see if you put this up by the register at $1.99, how many people pick it up in a week? If you put it on sale at $1.59, how many people buy it? If you put it on sale at $1.69, how many people buy it? And you will come up and you will start to see where the price points are. But well, that's what happens in the asset market, the financial markets. You get to see where price has, or where traders start to move and buy or sell a price. And you get a feeling for that. And you'll see, a lot of times you'll be reading news articles, and you'll see that, like, gold, this key psychological level right now is 1,200. Okay, we see it that J.P. Morgan has predicted it to go 11 to 1,180. Okay, now, these are not just numbers they're pulling out of the thin air, and they're not just percentages that say, ah, oh, we think gold's going to drop 22%. They've looked at all the support and resistance levels, and these are key levels over historic time that these prices have moved. So it's a combination of, of how much volume has hit a certain price, how long the asset has stuck at a certain price, how many times it has hit that price repeatedly in the past, and what the historic 
the uh, volume has been at that particular price. So what we're looking at is we're looking at a chart for no specific asset in particular, but you can see how the resistance and support levels can be drawn on that chart using, this is a candlestick chart, but you can do it using any kind of chart, but you can see over a period of time, and this goes back from, this is a 2000 chart, but it's a year period that we're covering, and you can see how often that bottom low price hit that support level and couldn't go below. Because what happens is at that level, people think whatever that particular item is, it's a bargain, and they start grabbing it up. When it hits a top level, people start thinking it's just way too high, and they just ease off the buying. Or if they're holding that asset, what a lot of people do is they will see what these support and resistance lines are, and they will put their sell orders in at a particular price. So what we're looking at has a, a resistance level at 100 and oh, about $19. So what happens is you'll see a huge amount of sell orders to sell this asset if it hits $119. So what will happen is when the asset hits that $119 uh, resistance level, it'll trigger automatic sell orders and it'll ease back down and then it'll rise back up to there because now it's already triggered all of those orders at that resistance level and it will probably peak right through and hit another close, like somebody will say at $119 sell sell, 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 and they'll take their profit. Somebody else say, ah, you know what, I'll wait till it's 119 and a quarter and, I'll, uh, and sell it. So it'll still pump through there, but we'll see, when, once it goes through that resistance level, you'll see those automatic sell orders. You'll see it ease back in. You'll see it try to climb back up, then you'll see it fall back down. And if it does that repeatedly, that reinforces the strength of that resistance for that support line. Now, this sounds complicated. Fortunately, in today's market, you don't have to calculate all this. When I started trading 40 years ago, you had to calculate all this. You don't have to do that anymore. But the more, time, the more times that price bounces off support and falls back from resistance, the stronger these support and resistance levels become. It creates a self-fulfilling prophecy. The more often it happens, the more likely it is to happen. Okay, we, we know that story. It applies in a lot of things. Okay, the more those historical patterns repeat themselves, the more traders know and the more confidence they become in forecasting the future behavior of a stock or any asset. Some prices become so entrenched in trading ranges that the stock eventually has a hard time breaking through these levels to either uh, to the up or the downside. If you remember a short while ago, Gold was trading just close to the $1,500 level, and everybody kept saying, is it going to make it? Is it going to make it? Is it, make it? it was almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. It just could not break through okay. um, because it wasn't that gold didn't have the momentum. It was all of these people that were saying, okay, sell, sell, sell at $1,500 or $1,499. And those are saying, no, I'm going to wait. I'm, you know, it was psychologically people psyched themselves into this. Okay, so understanding the concept of support and resistance, trading ranges, breakouts, breakdowns can be quite valuable to all traders. Support and resistance is the one of the strongest and most dependable tools available to a trader. Remember that it is best to use any tool along with other indicators whether, when deciding whether or not to take or exit a position. It is invaluable. You never trade the markets only using one thing. Each, if you're a fundamental trader, you use this information to support your decision. If you said, okay, I've looked at the news today, I've looked at the market, I've looked at all of the things, and I think the euro is going to go up today, you still need to look at a chart. You should have support and resistance levels on there. You should be saying, well, you know what, it's at the top of its of level, it's hitting up, it's about to hit a line of resistance. Let's, before I enter the market, let's see if it breaks through. Okay, you should be aware, or you can say, look, it just hit that level of resistance, bounced through, bounced down, fell off, it's hit it three times, say it's not making it through, so maybe I ought to reevaluate my decision. So support and resistance analysis is an important part of trends because it can be used to make trading decisions and identify when the trend is reversing. 
For example, if a, tra a trader identifies an important level of resistance that has been tested several times but never broken, he or she may take some profit as the share price or the asset price moves towards this point because it's unlikely that it will move past that level. Okay. Any questions? Everybody understand that? Okay. A lot of this is common sense when you think about it, and it's just a matter of telling yourself how to do it or figuring out how to do it and how to monitor it. Now, what we're looking at here is, again, a chart for the euro, U.S. dollar that I took today. And the euro, U.S. dollar at 1,100 GMT was trading at 136.09. Now, support and resistance changes with price. You can't just take the support and resistance level this morning. It's constantly, constantly changing. And it's constantly changing based on where the current price is. So you have to be aware of where the current price is at this moment to come up with the support and resistance levels. Now, you can take this chart and you can put any time during the day the, support, the important support and resistance levels above and below the price for the whole day. And you can fill it a whole range. But you still have to define where the asset is when you're looking at it at this time. Now, there are several ways you can do this. Tonight, we're going to go over. I'm going to take you live in the market shortly. And we're going to do this live with some of the, some of the assets that are trading. But what I have in front of us right now is off of the FX Empire website. And I'll give you that. I'll type that address in for you. Everything with it. I, I'm not ever going to take you somewhere you have to log in, sign up, pay for. Everything I take you to is free services in the Internet. And you can get charts and the support and resistance levels many, many, many places free. You can get it from investing.com, FX Empire, uh, Forex Street, FX Daily. Um, there's lots of places to get them. Today we're look, using fxempire.com. I just thank you all the, um, just actually let me give you the link, www.fxempire.com. That's the actual link. Okay, now, on this chart, we're looking at a 30-minute chart. Okay. We're looking at, again, the euro, U.S. dollar trading at 136.07. We can see that here. Now, it is giving us, on the chart, the support and resistance levels for the 30-minute pricing at this time, at this price. Okay. Now, these numbers change continuously, like I told you, as price changes. There's another way to get these. There's actually several ways to get it. Uh, again, we're looking at FX Empire, and we're going to go, again, live into the markets. But when you look at the FX Empire, and you look for a particular asset, and you look under the technical studies, it will bring you up a chart like we're looking at. And again, this chart is very similar to the one you'll find at any of the other places that are free. We're only talking about what's called classic, which is the straight, uncomplicated, undoctored calculations. Now, what's happened is when I started trading, you had to do all this by hand, and you were putting dots on charts and drawing lines and using straight rules and everything else. Today, you don't need to do that. You can just go to what's called a pivot point chart, and it will calculate and give you the support and resistance levels around the current price. Now, the thing is, when you go to these charts like we're looking at here, is you have to make sure that they're refreshed because sometimes when the price is moving really quickly, it's broken through these prices and it hasn't, their system hasn't refreshed yet. But what we want to do is, in this case, we, we know the euro is trading at 136.07. We have the support and the resistance levels around the current euro at 136.02 and 136.16. What we want to do is go back to that chart and put these lines on that chart. So you think you see, let me again get my marker here. You see that I put the S1 and the R1 on the charts. And what we've done is we've actually built a channel around the current price. I also put a trend line. Okay. Now, how do you get a trend line? You play the current price and three 
it's got to touch at least three points. So we see the current price is touching here and it's touching at 136.71 and we have the trend line. Now remember, these change based on the, the time frame of the chart and based on price movement. Okay. So what we actually have here is we have all the information we have that we need on the chart. We can see now that the price is trading right in the middle of the support and resist levels of support and resistance, and it's trading right on the trend line. Okay. So it's giving you a lot of clues and information about where the current price is. Okay. Most experienced traders will be able to tell many stories about how certain price levels tend to prevent traders from pushing the price of an underlying asset in a certain direction. For example, let's assume that Jim was holding a position in Amazon and that he was expecting the value of the shares to increase. Let's imagine that Jim noticed that the prices, that the prices failed to get above $39 several times over the past months. And even though it has gotten very close to, the moving, to moving above it, it hasn't. In this case, Traders would call the price level near $39, $39, a level of resistance. As you can see, well, I don't have a chart below, as, but as you can see, the chart levels of resistance are also regarded as ceilings because these prices, price levels prevent the market from moving prices upward. So the ceiling is the top of the price. It means it's at the top of its range. Okay. On the other side of the coin, we have price levels that are also known as support. This terminology refers to prices on a chart that tend to act as a floor by preventing the price of the asset from being pushed down. Okay. Determining future levels of support can drastically improve the returns of short-term investing strategies because it gives traders an accurate picture of what the price level should prop up the price of a given security in the event of a correction. So in other words, if we're trading a speech, or we're trading an economic event, we're trading something that happened today that's pushed the euro upward and we already see the euros climb skyward and we see it about to recover, those lines of support and resistance can tell us exactly where it should recover to. Teresa asked, the chart that you have in front is option rally chart. No, it's the FX Empire charts. Can you show us how to draw lines and add the indicators? I, I did, no, that's the technical part. Every charting service is very, very, very different. On the FX Empire charts, there is no charting service. Okay, we have our advanced charts that you can use, but you have to learn every charting service offers a different way to draw lines on a chart. You're going to have to look at the how-to manual. I'll take you over the FX Empire chart and show you that, but in the actual charts on the front of the website where you're on the trading floor, you cannot draw lines on them. They are not a charting service. They're just showing you the chart of the current asset. We do have advanced charts on the site and you can do that. Today, everything I'm showing you is at FX Empire because most traders' platforms don't offer you all the technical information. So you need to go to those through other services like FX Empire, Forex Street, uh, Daily Forex. Um, they offer all the technical indicators for you. But I will take you over and show you in, the, in a few minutes in the advanced charts on the Option Rally platform how you can use those. But you, every, every charting service you use is going to have different, different ways to draw lines on the chart, so to speak. They're all going to have the ability, but you're going to have to look for the little icon or drop, you know, use the drop down menus to find the ones that tell you how to add a line on there. Okay. okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do basically what Teresa just asked for. We're going to go over into the live internet and we're going to go to Option Rally and we're going to go to FX Empire Live and start taking a look at where prices are and how to put these prices on a chart. So I'm going to take us over to the internet. So hold on. I'm going to bring those screens up in front of us. Okay. And okay, because Teresa asked, we're going to go, let me go sign in here. And I'm going to show you where you can find the charts on our site. Okay, now, 
some of the charts, because of the software that I'm using, having nothing to do with trading, but the, the GoToMeeting software don't always work so well on with this software. And one of the reasons I use the FX Empire charts is they work extremely well with the GoToMeeting software. That so, if you go to our trade button on the website, once you've logged in, we have basic charts and advanced charts. Okay, the chart that you see here is in your screen right now. You cannot draw lines on on that. Okay. It, it's just an informational chart that you can look at in different time frames, but there's nothing you can do to draw a line on. It's just showing you where the price has moved over the 30 minutes, one hour, you know, whatever. Now, what we have, let me get the chart set up. We're going to look at the euro, U.S. dollar. Okay. So now we can see this is a live chart. It is trading at 136.05 right now. And there are two ways to get pivot point information. My recommendation is this one because it will give you up to the date, up to the minute data. And that is using what's called a pivot point calculator. It'll pop up on your screen in a second. There we go. And again, this is available from FX Empire. It's also available from all the other sites out there. Okay. And you simply here we've already picked up the, the Euro uh, the Euro US dollars trading at 136.04 right now. And by using this, we've put our asset in. We're using a five-minute interval. We can say a 15-minute interval for um, binary options. When we click on get, what it does is, if you notice, it changed everything in here to the most current prices. And then it calculated uh, for us. So we have up to the second support and resistance lines for the current price. Because like I said, a lot of sites publish them, but they don't refresh the, you know, some refresh every 60 seconds, some refresh every minute and a half. So you want exact numbers based on the current market price. So by using a pivot point calculator, it's all done for you. So we can see right now, let me get my marker back out here, okay. We can see right now that the level of resistance, okay, and my marker is not working either tonight. Okay, we can see that the level of resistance at one is 136.05, and the level of support is at 136.01. So we're going to go back over to the live streaming chart, and we're going to put these lines. We're going to click on the little button that says top, that says draw a horizontal line, and we're going to go draw on here at 136.05. Okay, once we've done it, we can pull it down to where we want. So it's a 136.01. And it was at 136.05. That's a very tight range. Now we've got to change this to a 15-minute Okay, so we've got on here now okay, it's still not letting my pen work, so I'll use their little code we'll draw on here. We want to draw a shape. And so we're going to draw a circle right around where price is. Okay, so we have price trading right in here in this range. And we have it is right on the line of support. And we have a line of support at 136.01. And we have a line of resistance at 136.05. And the current price, let's refresh this. The current price is at 136.09. Okay, so we can see that resistance changed to 136.43 and 136. Now we want 30-minute interval. 
So it was at 136.06. It's directly on the price. And at 136.59.599. So it's basically still where it is. So what we've got is now a channel. And we can put a trend line on here. And let's see if we can find three points from this price. Nope. Okay, this is where the trend line should be. Let's, hold on, I'm going to change the chart type now to a line chart. Uh, it's still the same as the, okay, so let's put on another trend line. Okay, that's a more accurate trend line, but actually this is the better of the trend lines here. See where it's hit the point here, it's crossed through here, it's leveled out at this price here and then crossed the current price. So we have two trend lines. We have also the support and resistance. The price is staying right in there, but it's at the very, very top of the level resistance line. It's actually just broken through. So we can either see it, we're either going to see it climb up and that's to become the new floor, or we're going to see it bounce off of there and come back down. And so it should stay somewhere in this range right about here. But if we were looking at trading the euro this evening, the euro US dollar, and we had decided what we thought should happen, well, look what just did happen. Let's go back to the area. The price just surged up, broke right through. We we it's gone up from 136.06, 136.05, all the way up to 136.12. It jumped right through that point of resistance. It jumped right above the trend line. And it's moving straight up. So now what we can expect is when it eases, and it's going to bounce off of there. And we can see that it's hit this point. Let me put a, a horizontal line on here for you. Okay. We can see that it has hit this point, this price point, right here, a billion times, and bounced off, which is 136.11. So we can see that if it's going to hit the 136.11 and turn back down and come back down, we can predict pretty well that it's going to come back down to the 136.06 level, and if it breaks through there, it'll come back down to the 136.01, and it should remain on this trend line here or this trend line there. Is everybody with me? Do you have any questions? Actually, I don't know if I can see my question screen right now. I think it's, let's see if I can. Okay. All right, there's a whole bunch of questions. So is it possible to get this webinar from you to listen to the first half? Uh, Johan, I answered your question for you. What is the best time interval to choose for binary options when drawing these? 15, 30, or 60 minutes. The one thing you want to make sure is you're always in sync. If you're using a 15-minute chart, use a 15-minute pivot point and use everything in 15 minutes. 15, 30, or 60 are best for binary options. And a little bit is to look at, at the the expiry of what you're looking for. If what you're looking for doesn't have expired for a couple hours, use a 60 minute. If it's got an expiry coming pretty close up, use a 15 or 30 minute. The other things you should always look at charts and time intervals. Because see, we're looking at the Euro US dollar right now in a 15 minute chart. If we click it over and look at the 60 minute chart, it looks much different. And it'll give you a different viewpoint. And you could have seen, actually at this point we could have seen a trend line on these prices. We could have also seen the longer term trend line from the top of these prices. Okay, If we looked at it in a four hour chart, we could have actually seen that the euro is way up, that it's been way down, and it's really not a, a downtrend at, at all. It's, it's trading flat. Okay. So always have things in perspective, because actually now we changed it to five minutes. Look at that. It looks like the euro is just soaring up steadily today. If we're looking at it in, but this is only what we see is from 1730 until um, 1940 this evening. So you need to look at perspective all the time. Okay. Now let, let, I'm just going down the, the windows and for the option. Is it better chart lines or candles? Okay, candles. Okay, a lot of people mix up two things. There's open, high, low, and close, and there's candles. Let me pull up open, high, low, and close. 
This is what open, high, low, and close looks like. Open, high, low, and close has, for each time segment, has the open price, the high price, the low price, the open price, and the close price. Okay. Those are much better for reading charts than candles. Now, candlesticks are the, about one of the most famous trading systems you can use. And they are very distinct, but the fact is, it is a trading system, and you have to learn how to read these candlesticks. You have to understand exactly what they mean and how they function and how they work. Okay. And overall, candlesticks are very good. If you're trading in the Forex market, you're trading in the commodities market, they are a great way of trading. Unfortunately, they don't help as much in binary options. The reason being is, remember, in binary options, you are only looking for two things. You only have control over two things, when to enter the market and which direction the market is going to go. Okay. You need to see the momentum of the market to see that it's going to climb up enough at the present time. Because even though a candlestick tells you an asset is going to go up or down or gives you an entry point, it doesn't tell you that that's going to, it's got the volume to carry it over the next 15 or 20 minutes. And what you need to do is you need, if you're going to trade it this way, then you need to see momentum indicators and volume indicators because you've got to know that the price has the momentum to continue in the direction you're picking till that expiry. Because when you're trading in the Forex or the commodities market, if it tells you that the euro US dollar is trading at 136.12 and it's, you, know, you can exit at 136.16 and make some profit, that works great. You don't have... And you can sell when it hits 136.16. You don't have that option in binary options. Okay, you 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 have time working against you. So personally, I don't use candles for binary options. I, I'm more concerned with the momentum that an asset has at that time, and that's why for binary options, fundamental indicators, news, events, calendars are very very good, and then correction points are very good using a chart. You know, knowing support and resistance so that you can see where the price should correct to, where it's going to bounce off of and go up to. Or basically, if you use channel trading, when you see it hit the top of a range and, and you see it in a range and you see it hit the top of the range and it's staying in that range for the last couple hours, you know it's going to bounce back down to the bottom of that range and then bounce back up. So if you can get it to the top or the bottom of those, you can get them. Okay. Now, normally, let's see. Is the option to do okay? Normally, when it reaches, we trade put options. But how are we sure that it will? That you're never sure. Okay, there is no sure in this in, in this world. There's no sure in trading. Okay, that's why you don't use a single indicator independently to make a decision. Okay, this is going to help you if you've already decided because you've done other analysis that the that the euro is going to climb. This will help you figure out when to enter the market. When it breaks through that resistance point going up and you want it to go up, you now say, okay, this is a final straw in my decision to trade. You do not trade simply on support and resistance levels. Okay. Now, let's see. When it reaches resistance, we trade with a put option, but how are we sure that it won't break the resistance? Okay, again, you, oh, you asked me the same question twice. Okay. Okay, can you show us where you can get these information? Okay, we are on, again, the FX Empire site. What we're looking at here is called is the Euro US Dollar Pivot Point Calculator. These are free and they're available everywhere. If you don't want to use this particular one, if you just do a search on the internet, put Pivot Point in. But if you want to access them on the FX Empire chart, the easiest way to get any of the data is when you go over here to the right, see the asset you want. When you click on that asset, what's going to do is give you up here. You want to see technical studies or tools. Okay. Uh, let me, I don't think it's going to allow me to circle it. Uh, yes, I can use this one. Okay. See right here? Right here? Okay. So if we click on the tools, it's already going to open up those tools that are available. So you have the Euro USD Fibonacci calculator, Euro USD pivot calculator, which is the one we're using right now, and we just click on it and open it. 
If you want to do it the easier route, you can go to the technical studies, click on technical studies. Let me clear this stuff off the calendar. And it's going to give you the tip. And you can scroll down and you can see the pivot point here. Okay, but these are the ones that are accurate, except they don't refresh themselves often enough. And that's why I tell you to go to the tools and use the pivot point calculator itself, because it will keep updating it and refreshing to the most current. So again, if you're here, if you just click on the tool button, it'll give you the tool in the particular asset you're looking at. And then, of course, you can change the asset. You want to see the charts, you can go right here to the charts, and... Everything is available to you right here. You click on the overview. Now, all you have to do is remember that they're called pivot point charts. And here, if you go to their chart section, you can also see them right here. But again, these tend not to refresh quick enough, and that's why I use them with the pivot point calculator. Teresa, did that answer your question? Okay, guys, on that note, I'm going to say goodnight to everybody. Now, this is, like I said, this is the beginner's class on support and resistance. The next class in two months from now, we will be going into a little bit more in depth and showing you how to apply trading strategies to using support and resistance lines. In the meantime, I would recommend that you practice this. Start looking at charts and drawing the trend lines and drawing the support and resistance lines on charts to get yourself familiar and comfortable, and you'll start to see how this roadmap starts to develop for you. Okay, uh, Melinda, you ask, can you recommend other reliable news or information sites that you use along with the pivot points you just shown us? Yes, I can. Okay, my preference in the marketplace for news because we need fresh news, okay, is, let me, hold on, let me get my marker turned off here, is, and I will bring it up here for you, is marketwatch.com. It is free. It is part of the Wall Street Journal family of newspapers. It's an online service. Okay. What they offer is, okay, they have about the best news viewer and headline viewer in the marketplace. See this? It just opened a window, but let me circle it for you. It says news viewer. Okay. Forget about the news that's on the site. Okay, it's a great site. I do lots of research on here, but forget about the news that's on their site. Okay. Let's talk about you as a trader needing news news. Okay. Now, this news viewer is absolutely incredible. The reason being is let me click and open it. What it is, is just like a ticker tape. They are feeding continuously everything that happens live in the markets. Not when they've written articles, not when they're ready to tell you about it. As it happens, so you see right here, 151, COMEX gold ends higher after two sessions decline. It's in black. That means because it just happened, and they haven't even had time to write an article about it. You see at 151 after that, they've got Feb February gold up $1.90 or 0.2% close at 1240. They still haven't had time to write an article. When they've had time to publish an article, like we finally get up here at 159, gold futures mark first gain in three sessions, we can see a summary of the article and the full sir. But I'm not concerned with their article. I'm concerned with the ticker tape, when this event happens. Okay, as news data comes out, as anything happens, this is about one of the fastest servers, and they have international coverage. They have offices all over the world because they're part of the Wall Street Journal. So they're giving you everything as it comes out. So we can see here, home builders' confidence ticks down in January. But well, that's after they've had a chance to write an article. But they, I'm sure whenever it was released earlier today, it hit the wire service right here. And so it's feeding it out live. And what you see is up top, the latest news. And you see it minute by minute as the day is progressing. Everything that is happening, and you can scroll back for the whole, you know, the whole entire, you know, 24 hours, 36 hours. It is to me, one of the best news services out there. Okay. Can you remove the message computer overload? I don't know what that message is. Jan, can you explain to me what that message is? I don't see, I, I, I don't know. What. 
what are the best indicators to use for binary option trade? I look at the MACD and stuff. Has, okay, that's in our, our class on technical indicators, and we'll talk about that at that point. Um, Melinda, thank you very much. Jan, I don't know what you're seeing. What you're seeing computer overload. Can you tell me more specifically? I, I don't have that on my screens anywhere. No, it's not on my screen anywhere that says computer overload. So it must be on your screen. There's nothing I'm looking at that says computer overload here. You sure it's not on your end? I have nothing up with Java at the moment. Okay, there's my Java charts. There's nothing on my computer screen that's saying computer overload. Sorry about that. All right, guys, on that message, I'm going to say goodnight to all of you. Hopefully, I'll see you next Thursday's class. Good night, guys. Thank you very much, and have a great weekend. Bye.